And what could be the problem with a simple thing like letting voters choose their own destiny? After all, we're only asking that the developer adhere to plans he already agreed to going in, including using the land the way residents want to and avoiding extending any construction beyond those plans. Now, who possibly could object to that? Who indeed, no surprise here, those with most to lose from reigning in the furious pace of Florida growth as represented corporately by the Florida Chamber of Commerce and individual big-time developers, and up until recently, something called Floridians for Smarter Growth, which was nothing more than a bogus front for these two, posing as a grassroots movement of its own and claiming to represent a separate ballot initiative of its own, and which, for all the resources at its command, never got close to offering a viable alternative to Florida hometown democracy. Floridians for Smarter Growth occupied itself with concentrated opposition to what more and more looks like an unstoppable voter swell. The dirty tricks and downright lies this group has engaged in from the start of the Amendment 4 campaign, a trail of unconscionable clamor, only serves to underscore the magnitude of Florida hometown democracy's perceived threat to those whose interests are vested in Florida's continued ruinous, unsustainable status quo. As this presentation goes to press, we hear that Floridians for Smarter Growth has in fact been left to die a natural death by its underwriters. Despite outlays to date of over $4 million, it never did weather the unconstitutional challenge last year in the Florida Supreme Court for its discriminatory voter provisions, nor did it ever achieve anything close to the needed half million signatures to put it on the ballot by this February 1st. But if it's nothing else, Florida's big money is persistent. Don't look to it to give up its fight to pave over our state. Don't look in their direction for anything like consistency or responsible citizenship. Do, in the coming months, look for them under a number of newly coined, just as bogus rubrics, like Citizens for Lower Taxes and a Stronger Economy, or Foundation for Leadership Integrity, or Floridians for Principal Government, or Committee for Florida's Future, or Coalition for Florida's Families, or Citizens for Housing and Urban Growth, or Committee Supporting Utilities and Competitive Commerce. The language keeps coming. Language sounding like anything but who these folks really are. Certainly not principled, definitely not ordinary citizens, and clearly not for the general well-being of our state. One wonders to what extent this money power is even rooted in Florida at all. One thing you're going to hear a lot about in the coming debates is an argument of our very philosophy of government, because we've already been hearing it plenty in the debates to date, especially from our elected officials themselves, notably those with significant interests in developing Florida. They say our country is an elective democracy, so leave decision-making to the elected officials. Well, if only we could. Fact is, as any student of American Government 101 well knows, our system is a combination of elective and direct democracies. Why else would Florida be one of 16 states honoring the very voter initiative undergirding this constitutional amendment? A related line of reasoning is that our future is much too complicated to be left to those who have to live it. Indeed, proposals by professional planners generally come across as so obtuse to suggest only planners themselves can possibly know what they themselves are talking about. The idea that comprehensive plans could be written in a way Mr. and Mrs. Voter easily understand is considered as close to unprofessional as you can get in the planning community. Leave it to the elect and the experts something very un-American about that whole idea. Speaking of what's there to leave, let's hear from the poet of sustainable natural living, Wendell Berry. To my children, fearing for them, terrors are to come. The earth is poisoned with narrow lives. I think of you what you will live through or perish by eats at my heart. What have I done? 
I need better answers than there are to the pain of coming to see what was done in blindness, loving what I cannot save. Nor, your eyes turning toward me, can I wish our lives unmade, though the pain of them is on me. Recently, my wife and I were carried away by a land remembered, story of Florida old and new from the vantage point of a single Florida dynasty. I don't know why it took so long for this book to find us. Definitely a Florida to remember. The book has achieved textbook status in our schools. Here's an essay by one Haley Chataway, a fourth grade student at Eisenhower Elementary in Clearwater. The book taught me to treasure the land we've got, not for hotels, condos, and malls. Tobias Zeck and Saul taught me that, got me thinking less negative and more positive. The McIveys never gave up, made me feel emotions I never felt before. Solomon made me furious as a train whistle blowing, cutting down trees, draining rivers, building hotels where hammocks once were. The McIvey clan came slowly and faded away fast. Well, the alternative for us, a few choice observations from our lone wolf poet of places hidden and wild, Edward Abbey. Growth for the sake of growth is the ideology of the cancer cell. New Yorkers like to boast that if you can survive in New York, you can survive anywhere. But if you can survive anywhere, then why live in New York? This ever-rising cost of living, someday soon the corporate technicians will be locking meters on our noses and charging us a royalty for the very air we breathe. So just who is Florida hometown democracy? It's private people, citizens of Florida like you and me, people who choose to be here, people who have to live with what's done here. And it's about that one individual who always we find behind a cause that reaches us and moves us to action. Her name is Leslie Blackner, young housewife and mother from West Palm Beach, who also happens to be a crackerjack attorney. She used her own money to organize the initiative and then drive Florida hometown democracy all the way to the Florida Supreme Court to get it on next November's ballot. You care about Florida too, or you'd still be twirling your thumbs on the Long Island Expressway. We need you to join us. Come to FloridaHometownDemocracy.com and donate your help. And then, next November, be sure to pull that lever for Amendment 4. For you and me, for what's left, for our beautiful Florida. Florida.